So I'm usually a pretty big wuss when it comes to horror movies, but I know there's a lot of great films in this genre, so I'm trying to be brave and branch out and watch some of them. So today I'm watching the 2011 film Scream 4. You can check out my reactions to Scream 1 through 3 on my channel as well. I believe this came out 10 or so years after Scream 3. Scream 3 has been my favorite of the sequels first scream I mean you can't compete with that and I'm usually pretty skeptical of sequels but I love this you know tongue-in-cheek movie within movie references and I don't know if Wes Craven will be involved I don't know if the same cast will be involved because obviously significant time has passed and I know there's a fifth and maybe a sixth one coming out soon as well like they're still continuing the series it's ongoing so I'm very curious to see where this story is going to pick up in Scream 3 we had this stab movie based on the Woodsboro murders that had happened. Sydney was back and we see this Roman character ends up being Ghostface. So I'm curious to see who Ghostface is in this one, especially since in Scream 3, Roman was connected to the first two ghost faces as well like he had been orchestrating it this whole time and I thought that was a great twist because you'd eventually kind of run out of just random people to be involved. So I thought that that was a nice tie in to have him have this connection. So I don't know who else is left and where we're going to go. So I'm very curious to see. I hope Wes Craven's involved. I think he's great. And you can tell he's just such a movie fan and, you know, really loves this art form. So I hope to see his name in the credits. It is interesting to have a different person be Ghostface every time, especially compared to other slasher films where, you know, Michael Myers or even, you know, Friday the 13th with Jason, like we know who this is. We know who the bad guy is. This, there's still that element of mystery where it's like, okay, who is Ghostface and how is he still coming back? Like who is reprising this role, you know, every time to take down Sydney's sanity, basically. So I'm very curious to see where we're going to go, where they're going to be in life because we've done high school, we've done college. College. like we've kind of passed all those phases so where is she gonna be now I'm assuming the character will at least be involved even if the actress even if Nev Campbell isn't but yeah I'm very curious to see where this is gonna go so thank you so much for sharing in this first time watching with me if you have any other suggestions for movies you think I should watch please comment below and if you want to have a say in what movies or tv shows I watch be sure to join patreon and as always please like comment and subscribe to this channel and check back often for more awesome content Do you like scary movies? How do you really feel? Well, I like Jigsaw. I think he kills people very creatively. I like this throwback to the first one for sure with the phone calls and the knife in the kitchen. Stalker. He keeps leaving me messages. Yeah, like what? Just stuff like, hey, what's up? You're hot. I want to kill you. What? One of those should be a red flag. You want to see? <laughs> That's Channing Tatum. <laughs> Catfished. Oh my god, those phones. Of course it is. That's creepy. It says, I'm not outside. I'm right beside you. Oh my god! Oh! <laughs> He's never wrong. He doesn't lie. Many flaws, but not a liar. Oh, there's two of them. Cheese and rice. Goodbye. We knew they weren't gonna last long. Thank you for coming. You've been a great addition to the cast. Enjoy your scene. Oh, stab six. Oh my gosh. What? That was so fucking stupid. Pure horseshit. The death of horror right here in front of us. A movie within a movie within a movie. A bunch of articulate teens sit around and deconstruct horror movies until Ghostface kills them one by one. That is the theme of our show, yes. I can't do it. These sequels don't know when to stop. They just keep recycling the same shit. And making fun of themselves, obviously, in another sequel. The girl who gets a call that undoubtedly ends up getting her killed. It's all so predictable. There's no element of surprise. You can see everything coming. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Didn't see that coming, did you? Did that surprise you? Cheese and rice. Oh my god. Because you talk too much. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Shut the fuck up and watch the movie. Body count's adding up. Yep. Cheese and crackers. 
She really is passionate about horror movies. Um, stab seven. Come on. Yes. How far are we going to go? It's illogical. It begs the question that if the beginning of step seven is step six, then is the beginning of step six, step five? And if so, what is step four about? We're opening a can of worms. Riddle me this. Where does it end? The first three, the original trilogy, is based off of Sidney Prescott. But then she threatened to sue them if they used her story. So then they just started making stuff up. That's fair. That'll happen. Something. Did you hear that? Uh, no, I didn't hear anything. If this cuts is stab eight, I mean, the joke was funny. I just don't know. Like, is the first hour just going to be referencing other? I mean, I, I probably like that, to be honest, too. I don't know. I love the Wes Craven style. I know you're trying to scare me. I'm not. This one seems like the start of the actual movie and not just stab eight, but who knows? For it every year. I don't see why you get off on this. <laughs> Marnie? I think she's pranking her now. Oh God, it's never gonna end. Pono, GPA and 135 IQ asshole. What did you do with Marnie? She's on the cutting room floor. That's not funny. The film jokes. It's a horror film. People live, people die. And you better start running. Oh! They're gonna throw back to the Pamela Anderson on the... Oh, bye Marnie. Okay. If they don't cut to stab eight, then she's real. They did mention Woodsboro, so... Ooh! And they always go upstairs. If you've seen any of my other Scream reactions, you know that that is my biggest pet peeve. Upstairs is never the safety place. The garage sequence in Scream is one of the most disturbing, but probably best scenes in the whole franchise. So dark. Oh my god. I love all these references and just like these nods to the audience. Yep, goodbye. You've been garage doored. <laughs> Crunch. Okay, I was like, stab eight! I can see it in my head already, but here we go. Scream four. All right. And it seems like Woodsboro is embracing Ghostface, like they're obviously decorated throughout the town. What do you think? Well, I guess today is the anniversary. Kids. No, I meant the display. Oh. And Alice and Bree as well. Okay, great to see Nev Campbell back. And David Arquette's back. Okay, it's good to see his familiar faces. Is that gonna be Gail? Snoozing next to him. Yes, ma'am. I'm very excited that the same cast is gonna be back, at least so far anyway. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 25, stay alive! Save the cheerleaders, save the world. I mean, not if you're speeding. That's a death trap. Why? What did you do? It's Trevor called me last night. Why is he calling you? Because you won't take his calls. So many, like, 2000s actresses like Emma Roberts, Hayden Pantier as well. I think I pronounced her last name right. Don't come for me. I have no fucking idea what to write. <laughs> I've recently watched Shining Veil vale with Courtney Cox in it, and she's surprisingly funny. Like, I didn't know that about her. Like, I don't think she's had many comedic roles, but she was so funny in that show. I'm totally mobile now. Very dry and sarcastic, but funny. From Stab One, duh. Hey, Charlie. You're a uh, genre nut, Kirby. What's your favorite scary movie? Bambi. It is heartbreaking. And Rory Culkin as well. Oh, man, I'm, this cast is insane. You know where you exist. Nah, man, she wants me. And I love that there's like an AV aspect to it. Very Wes Craven to have this, you know, video within a video. Yeah. Trevor's looking suspicious. Okay. But too obvious. It's got to be somebody else. Bring it out here. There. Is that Adam Brody as well? My God, who isn't in this movie? Oh 
Oh my god. Okay, it's now official crime scene. Let's lock it down. She is being framed. Uh oh, Sydney. If Sydney turns out to be Ghostface, this that's a twist we never saw coming. Or that you even bake him those little treats as you do. But if you're gonna start acting like him, you gotta put a mustache on him because you sound ridiculous. <laughs> Gail. <laughs> In about two seconds, I'm going to revitalize your face with my tarnished brand. I still got it. Yep, there she is. That's the Gail we know and love. I'm glad she's got a different haircut in this one. Those bangs were not doing anybody justice, my friend. Match for the ninja, baby. <laughs> anyway, what are you doing in the house with Sidney Prescott? I like the uh, An American Werewolf in London poster on the door. Nice touch. I keep meaning to pick up a copy of your book, but... You're smaller in person. Okay, weird kid. Time to go. Bye, Trevor. What? Nothing. You just, uh, you remind me of, uh... You? Yeah, I was gonna say, when boys were sneaking into your room, yeah. Sorry about that. Just making my rounds before taking off. Great, thanks. So far, I think Ghostface is either Trevor, you don't remember Judy, me. or Robbie. Those are my three potentials. Oh, it's nice to see you again, Judy. You too. And I recognize this actress from Sugar and Spice, but I can't remember her name right now. I'm gonna have to look it up in the credits. She's on the list. Yeah. She can live next door to me. Now, seriously. Uh... Yes, Shaun of the Dead. Yes. Great film. So fun. I want to talk to you. Come on, Mr. Ghostface, whisper to me. Aren't you supposed to ask me a question? She's like egging him on. Oh my god, this is gonna end badly. Yeah, how does he know? Not. What's going on? Trevor's being weird. I mean, if it is him, I don't know. What? This is not fucking Trevor. And the girl next door is gonna watch this happen to her friends, which is horrible. And she was gonna go over there too. Oh my god, don't check the closet. No, run away. Run, run. There's no way you're in there. See for yourself. Kirby. And the Fallout Boy poster. Oh, uh, yes, my heart. <sighs> Liar. I'm over this. I never said I was in your closet. Oh, no, it's reverse. Oh, no. It's in hers. Oh, ooh, no. Oh, my God. I was like, yeah, he's not a liar. He's in somebody's closet. Oh, my God. This is a night. Ooh. That's gonna leave a mark. Oh, she's putting up a good fight. And a watch from across. That's so painful, your friends. Oh my god. <laughs> Run over there. Come on. Oh my god. Oh. He's literally next door. Come on. How are the. Call the police. They're outside. Come on. Do something. Oh. Bye, Olivia. Perkins! <laughs> Oh my god, so gruesome, so many stabs. <laughs> Just for. Tr oh my god! <laughs> oh, this is gruesome. Sydney's coming to the rescue. She survived this before, she can do it again. Just a massacre. Oh my god, our insides are on our outside. Good gravy. That's a lot of intestines. Was not ready for that. Oh, you left behind. I've got plans for you. I'm gonna slit your eyelids in half so you don't blink when I stab you in the face. Good god, that's graphic. Not a moment before. Until then, you're going to suffer. Sydney? Is it Gail? I don't know. I'm throwing names out there because whoever was sounded pissed that she had succeeded from this murders and oh there he is oh my god and that they were like stuck in Woodsboro which sounded like oh good night so many chops I hope Sydney's been studying martial arts for the past 10 years oh right in the bits good Good kick, Sydney. Now the police show up. Come on! 
What happened? Oh my god, Jill. And they always place characters like, if it was Trevor, did he have enough time to take off the ghost face costume? How did he get here so quickly? But it just seems too obvious for it to be Trevor, so I'm gonna say no. And on the phone, he said multiple times he's not Trevor, and this ghost face doesn't lie. Sydney's like, I'll just come back to my hometown to reminisce about the horrible things that happened in the book I wrote. And then more horrible things happen. From the other direction. No, he must have circled back around somehow. He's like a ghost. Chief, we're sorry. I feel terrible. There's obviously multiple ghost faces. We saw two in the first uh, scene as well with um, those girls. He's webcasting right now. Oh, mind turning it off for a little old school off the record? Can't. Owe it to my audience. Turn the fucking thing off. <laughs> Constantly live streaming. Oh my gosh. What about Sydney? Yeah, you know her, right? I mean, you're friends with her? No offense, but that'd be a big deal for Cinema Club. That's the last thing Gail wants to hear. She was trying to like be like, oh, you'll get me. And they're like, Sydney, actually, though. And you get a ton more checks. Win-win. I won't be needing you anymore. Yeah, I think they've got different ideas of what uh, they want from this book tour. The problem with Sydney is that she never gets laid. Oh, God. <laughs> Sydney Prescott, please. I'm handling Miss Prescott's calls and appearances. May I take a message? You are the message. Oh, no, she's next. Bye, Rebecca. Alone in a parking garage. <laughs> of course, the car is not going to want to start. Oh, man. <laughs> knock knock get out of there hit the horn or something yeah oh my god yeah it's gonna be oh great now you're really stuck oh good night oh my god Right outside the hospital doors, too. Oh, man. Oh, body count's adding up. Community to know that we are very close to bringing this whole situation under control. Oh, my God. Oh, my. Oh. Was not expecting that. Oh, my God. Right on the news van. Oh, my God. Right outside the press conference. You see anybody? Nobody up here. There's nobody up there, Sheriff. Yeah, and Dewey keeps discrediting Gail. She's like, I'm trying to help you, and he wants to do everything on his own. Have a lead, and you don't. So let me know when you're back on Team Gail. Yeah, they've done this before, and now he's just like, I'm Sheriff now, I can't. And I mean, obviously they're married, so it sounds a little bit of complicated, so. Okay, Cinema Club, we are now in session. Welcome tell you a little bit about ourselves we are a sanctioned the thing a classic as well and the vertigo poster it's like the natural next step in a psycho slasher innovation i mean you film them all real time and then before you get caught you upload them into cyberspace that's so messed up oh my god these guys are twisted Not to implicate him. i definitely think robbie might be a suspect hot chick savage beyond recognition we all know where it goes from there a party exactly a party these two are too involved. They've thought this through too much. Yeah, I definitely think they might be into it. Tonight? <laughs> There's a killer out there patterning his murders after the original movie. I know, it's pretty wild. Well, you have to call It's it. way too excited about that. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely interesting how to see this town, like, embrace this horrible event and how they're like having this movie marathon about the movies of the murders that happened there you know and a big party and like this is re like this was a real thing in the movie like that happened so yeah very bizarre and it's only been 10 years like it's not like it happened you know 50 years ago or something but yeah it's interesting how they've turned into like a touristy thing almost annual stab a thumb. <laughs> Safety numbers, my friend. Safety numbers. He's ready to drink every time someone can't get a cell phone signal. All the tropes. Yeah. Well, let's get 
get this Stabathon started! I do love that the Scream franchise is chosen to make fun of itself with making fun of, and Robert Rodriguez, um, these stab movies. But it's also a perfect place for Ghostface to actually hide because people would be dressed up like him too. Obviously someone found them. Yep. And they're not uh, into this. Goodbye. They did say they'd want to film them. That would be the next step. Oh, that's terrifying. So they're like, we don't need your cameras. We brought our own. Oh my God. Yep, there it is. Oh, and I see it running towards them like that. Oh no. Ooh. Oh God. And of course, nobody can hear anything because of the movie happening in the background. Yeah, like a reenactment on screen versus what's happening to Gail. Oh my god. Get him! Freeze! Oh! Oh! Come on, he's literally right there. Like, oh my god, you gotta get him! Somehow he always escapes. He's recording the murders. What? This time, he's making the movie. Yeah, that's what they said. That's what exactly what they said they would do. Oh my god. And just adding another layer of movie to a movie. Let's get it. What are you talking about? It's a movie cop rule. It sucks to be a cop in a movie. Unless you're Bruce Willis. <laughs> Not all cops die in movies. No, but... If it's your last day before retirement, you do. Or, yeah, that's usually when it happens. Yeah. I'm always careful. <laughs> Dead man walking. <laughs> no! Oh. <laughs> Damn it. You should have seen the look on your face, rookie. Oh, God. Oh! That's that's a lot. That's a lot. Oh my god. That's a gusher. Yeah. Oh, good gravy. I don't think that would go deep enough. I don't. I don't know. What am I talking about? That's a lot. Whoa. Good lord. Goodbye. And they were, of course, they were just talking about how police die in horror movies and they don't make it. Well, they weren't wrong. Oh yeah. You can't see anything. Oh gosh. <laughs> Fuck Bruce Willis. <laughs> Is Jill ghost face? I don't know. I'm guessing. I'm guessing. We'll see at the end, obviously. Oh, no. Out the front. There's multiples. Ooh! Raise it from the bottom. Can you? Oh, yeah. Lock that door. Lock every door and window. Oh, he got her through the door. He got her through the door. Yeah, she can't move now. Oh, bye, Kate. Oh, the mail slot. Oh, my God. Like, well, what's the point of being a survivor if you don't have anybody left to care about you? Good night. He is getting real dark. Promise me something. Anything. <sighs> Catch that motherfucker. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, yeah? Who played Leatherface first? Gunnar Hansen. Wow. Did you feel that? <laughs> He's like, we got a connection here? <laughs> Unbelievable. You're playing fucking trivia games? The cops are gonna come for us. They're gonna shut down my website. We're so dead. Yeah, I agree. Jesus Christ. Who invited Trevor? No, you found the anti party and it's invitation only. Yeah, well, I got an invitation from Jill. He's hacked into their phones. Yep, here we go. Yeah. 
gonna go scary. Saw four. Ugh, I saw that in theaters. It sucks. It's not scary. It's gross. It's definitely reminding me of the first Scream film with this party and they're drinking and if someone cries saying, don't tell my parents, we've made it. We did have somebody like jump or fall off a balcony, if I'm remembering correctly as well. Who's there? Oh, good God. The stupid jump scares get me every time. Ah, oh, and that one was just a freaking plant. And of course, now he's recording behind him. Oh, so we'll see Ghostface attack. Now would be a really good time to make a move. I said, who is it? For me to make a move? <laughs> There's nobody else here, buddy. Yeah. That's better. Welcome home, ghost face. Oh, bye, Robbie. Okay, there goes my theory that it was him. Cheese and rice. Oh, God, no. Of course, this is all going to be live streamed. I don't think he cares about the rules. I mean, if it helps. Oh, <laughs> again. Bye, Robbie. I appreciated your appreciation for movie knowledge. We're running out of people. Who's left to be Ghostface? I now think it's Jill. She seems the one that based on what Ghostface has said, it lines up. I should have told you a mom no, where it's I was okay. going. It's just I need you to come with me. Come with me right now, okay? Run! Run! And I feel like we've had a scene like that as well with on the doorstep. Yeah, oh my God, get in the house, run! Always with the upstairs. Oh, nice. I would be pooping my pants. I feel like Sydney has to make it, right? She's our final girl. Out of all of them, she has to make it. Hello? Dewey! Sydney, where are you? I'm at Kirby's. The killer is here, I need your help. I'm on my way. Okay. Oh! Oh, my heart, that got me. Yeah. I need all units to 329 Whispering Lake. All units, 329 Whispering Lake! <laughs> yeah, take your chances with the fall instead of getting stabbed in the hand. Run, Sydney, run! Charlie, it's me! I'm sorry, I can't. What the fuck? They just signed his death warrant, exactly. Yeah, clearly it's- Oh! Oh my god. Bye, Charlie. It did seem genuine, but it's so hard to know. That's what I like about this movie, is you're always trying to figure out who it is. Oh, we've seen this before, for sure. In the first one, yeah, it was by the pool. The movie that started the slasher craze. Halloween, oh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Last House oh, on the Left, or Psycho? Psycho! None of the ever! Oh, that was a trick question. 60 directed by Michael Powell. First movie to ever put the audience in the killer's POV. I haven't seen that one. In which the villain... Halloween, uh, Texas Chainsaw, Dawn of the Dead, The Hills Have Eyes, Amityville Horror, uh... She's just listing them all. She's like, pick whichever one you want. Street, my bloody Valentine, when a stranger calls a prom night, Black Christmas, House of Wax, the Fog. Uh, and of course, this being a, a sequel, she's listing off all the other remakes as well. Or if this is supposed to be a remake of the first Halloween, that definitely feels like where we're going. A first scream, not Halloween. My bad. I was there. Kirby, this is making a move. <gasps> Freaking Charlie! Oh my god! Glasses together. You notice me now? <laughs> Stupid bitch! Oh my god, Charlie! I was rooting for you. Oh man, I thought it was Robbie. But Charlie was too quiet. Oh man, Charlie! <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, 
I was feeling bad for him that she didn't let him in, but obviously that was the right call. Good night. I think there might be others, but it's obviously Charlie's involved. But how did- yeah, there has to be somebody else who made that phone call, because it- Oh! Where's Jill? I think she's gonna get away. I think anyone gets away. Sydney's like, I've done this. Oh! <gasps> it's gotta be Jill. No one's left. Yes, exactly. I knew it. Freaking knew it. She was the one who was mad that she left. Great footage of my Robbie kill. Better than Jenny and Marty or Olivia even. Good, we'll cut and upload it later. Make it all traceable to Trevor. Oh, they're gonna put it on Trevor. Oh no! Mind you of anything? Yep, yep, yes. Dick. Everything I learned, I learned from you. <laughs> He's like a fan? Baby, please. Please. Shouldn't have killed all those people, Trev. Did she kill her own mom then? Oh my god. I bet you did it for me. What the fuck are you talking about? I am not the girl you cheat on. Oh! <laughs> this poor guy. Oh yeah. I I can't even nope, that's horrible. Okay, bye Trevor. That's Yikes. Cold-blooded killer over here. She's really mad he cheated on her. Shot him right in the dick. There's no coming back from that, I'm afraid. It's gonna be a mess. Sensation. I mean, people gotta see this shit. It's not like anyone reads anymore. That was their friend. Yeah, oh my god, she's horrible. Sydney this and Sydney that and Sydney, Sydney, Sydney. You were always just so fucking special! And it's interesting how there's still this connection to Sydney. Like, we've seen that pattern throughout the other ones, too. You have to be strong and hold still, okay? Yeah, old school. Like Billy and Stu. Yeah, I was gonna say, they need to injure each other, and that's what we saw in the first one. Shoulder me! Shoulder me! Shoulder me! Get it up! That's not a shoulder. That's his heart. Yep. She missed. Big time. But the media really loves Baby. As a soul survivor. Just ask you now who. She's like, this was a partnership until it didn't, uh, you know, make me advance anymore, so bye. Oh! <laughs> Bye, Charlie. You were the worst. Shouldn't have trusted her. She's clearly nuts. She's clearly off her rocker. You get it? This has never been about killing you. It's about becoming you. She's nuts. Oh my god. I want mine! I mean, what am I supposed to do? Go to college, grad school, work? Murder seems like the other option. What the frick is wrong with you? Franchise. There's only room for one lead, and let's face it, your ingenue days, they're over. <laughs> oh, God! Sydney's like, I never should have come home. This was a huge mistake. I feel bad for Trevor now. How is the gun gonna work when everybody's been stabbed? Oh god, I can't look. Oh! oh, that's gonna leave a mark, which is what she wants, obviously. Oh my god. That's commitment. Shh. Oh my god. Better call the cops soon, lady. Or you're not making it. Oh, not through the coffee table. Please, no. I can see it coming. With the Red Bull product placement. Oh! <laughs> I don't think Sydney's dead. I think she knows better and will play dead so that they leave her alone, basically. Oh my god. It's just to look, be that close to her? No, thank you. 
Jill, can you give us a description? Jill, over here. Jill, what happened to this? This is what she wanted. This is what she asked for. So, oh my gosh, that's horrible. An interesting way to like perceive it that she just wants the fame and yeah, I like how she's still connected to Sydney. If I ever write a book one day, I'd, I'd want her to write it with me. We'd be a good team with our Blech. barf wounds and all. That should set off some red flags there, do we? Who are you, Michael fucking Myers? Yeah, I don't think so. Oh my god. <laughs> Sydney's like, I just can't come back to this town ever. Oh! Right in the wound. That's rude. That's real rude. Oh my god, what a jerk. Sid. Sid. Do it. Ah. Oh, bedpan to the face. That's unfortunate. Come on, Gail. Gail's gotta come storming in and save him. It's looking grim. Okay, wait. What about the book? Looks like I'll just have to write it myself. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh! Don't even. Judy to the rescue. And get up. Is she gonna use the defibrillator? Keep your hands over your head. Don't do anything stupid. Oh! <gasps> Don't fucking tell me what to do. Judy, no. She's skinny ass out here. I'm gonna enjoy blowing your head off. <laughs> yep! Oh, I think those words are gonna come back to get you. No. Clear. Aha! Clear. Oh, nice! I don't know what that does to a person, but it can't be good. I forgot the first rule of remakes, Jill. Don't fuck with the original. It's a great line and great recommendation. That just fried her brain. Yep. Oh my god, Dewey. I can't even imagine what that does to a person's insides. Good night. Bye, Jill. You were the worst. They always are. Ah, of course. Oh, oh, god. oh thank god she's okay. I was worried. Alive? Oh, wear the vest. Save your chest. I thought she got shot in the head or something. She went down. We need a doctor, goddammit! Oh my god, looking into her cold, dead eyes. <laughs> Gail's on a rampage. She's back. The Woodsboro Massacre Reboot. Jill Roberts is her name, a name the whole world will now know. Who single handed For the wrong reasons, yeah. A girl who's lifted all our spirits tonight, an American hero right out of the movies. That's how she wanted to be remembered, even though it's a big fat lie, so. Oh yes, okay, good, I'm glad. Uh, I was wondering if you'd be involved. So that was my first time watching the 2011 sequel, Scream 4, or should I say remake? They kept hinting that this was more of a remake than a sequel. There was tons and tons of references to the first film. I'm sure I didn't even catch all of them. I feel like you could rewatch this and there's more pieces. And I feel like that's what I love most about the Scream franchise is they're constantly making fun of themselves, which is just great. And always referencing little pieces as well for the audience, because with any you know horror franchise things change and you know typically the villain stays the same or your final girl stays the same but you know to make fun of themselves constantly I just love and you could tell that Wes Craven is such a big horror movie fan and movie fan and I love that he was involved in this I'm, I was worried because it had been such a big time jump and I was like okay is somebody trying to reboot this like is it gonna be horrible it definitely wasn't my favorite of the sequels, but do I think it's the worst thing I've ever seen? Definitely not. If it came on TV, I would probably watch it, but 
it gets tricky with sequels because you kind of run out of those ties that you can pull from. And in this one, we had, you know, Sydney's cousin who they said they didn't really know. They weren't really close. And I like that she was back, you know, for this book tour and this kind of rivalry with her and Gail as Gail had written a book as well. And now that was something Sydney had pursued. And that was, you know, Jill's motivation as well. She wanted the fame. She wanted to be this final girl, you know, the one survivor and have her own book. And she's like, that's how you get famous these days. I was just like, your perception of fame is very skewed. And just the clearly that was where her mind was at. But I really like that we still had some connection and it wasn't a total stranger. Was it a bit far? Sure. But I don't feel like there was still some kind of connection. And knowing that this girl killed her own mob, like... And now Sydney has lost another relative as well. And I'm sure Sydney just feels horrible and thinks, you know, if she never came back to Woodsboro, that this wouldn't have happened. And it was weird to see the town embracing it. I don't know that that would happen. I mean, obviously, every town kind of has its urban legends or whatever you want to believe. But they knew that this had happened recently and it had clearly affected everybody in this town. But... To put on a festival where you're watching movies about the horrible thing that happened where real people died seemed, I don't, uh, yeah, I don't know if that would actually happen, but it was an interesting take to see how the town would have responded to Ghostface and this, you know, concept and all these seven films that had come out um, from Stab. And I really loved the intro. I'm glad they didn't make it too f ridiculous where sometimes you're like okay that was a good joke and then it just goes on for too long but they did it smart they did a good job where you know we start with stab six and then it cuts to stab seven and I love that we're watching the movie and not realizing that it's the movie obviously because we haven't seen these people before and it's not uncommon for Scream to start with two characters who get killed off very quickly and then cuts to, you know, kind of our main character story following Sydney and her journey as this final girl. So I thought that was so well done. And it reminded me of another Scream movie where they go see Stab in the theater. I think it's Stab 1, maybe they go see. And somebody in the audience is, in fact, Ghostface. And, you know, is going through the audience killing people, but under the guise of the movie. So I love that they do those movie within a movie within a movie. And it, it does get very meta at some point. And, you know, those references upon references. But I still enjoyed it. Like I said, definitely not my favorite of the sequels. But it was great to see the same cast back with Nev Campbell, Courtney Cox, David Arquette, and that I know Courtney Cox and David Arquette were married in real life and to see their characters be married in this film as well was interesting and obviously a bunch of new cast because we have to and it's been, they don't try and make it like this is Woodsboro, you know, two weeks later. They openly state the time jump that it's been 10 years and obviously people's lives have changed and characters would have moved on. And I liked the addition of Judy, you know, the police officer helping Dewey. And I was suspicious of her, but also Scream doesn't make it overly obvious. Like if there's somebody who seems very suspicious, they're usually not that person, which I like. They don't go for the most obvious, you know, okay, I could have told you 20 minutes ago he was the killer, but I definitely thought Robbie was going to be more suspicious and Charlie kind of faded into the background, which I think was kind of the whole point. It was supposed to be the surprise that the end. Jill, I was getting more and more suspicious of, obviously, as people started dying, and we knew it couldn't be just one of them. We had seen multiples in the first scene as well, and, you know, Jill would have had to make a phone call, or Charlie would have had to make a phone call, and they definitely referenced Billy and Stu as well, and, I mean, it's just so many references to the first film, which I loved, and I definitely need to rewatch it, because it's so good. And even them talking, I feel like they explain the movie to you, which I feel like is common in Scream movies where they're like, oh, you know, every sequel and every remake, they need to up, you know, the kills and they need to change it. And, you know, typically the next step of the movie is the party. And then they have the party scene and they literally lay it out for you. I mean, they don't tell you who the killer is, but they kind of just lay out the structure because they're talking about movies in a movie. And I love that format. And I haven't seen a ton of other horror movies emulate that. It would probably be hard to do that without being, you know, harshly referenced for just copying Scream, but they just do it so well. And I feel like it's such a fine line. It could become just too much, but I'm curious to see there is a Scream 5. So let me know in the comments if you think I should watch that, what that's like, because I believe there is still a pretty big time jump from this to Scream 5, if I'm remembering correctly. 
obviously we know Sydney makes it out. We know Gail makes it out. We know Dewey makes it out and Judy, this other cop. So I don't know how their characters would come into play, but I'm so glad the same cast was back for this. I think that really helps continue the story. And obviously with Sydney being our final girl as well. So and we needed the new characters. I mean, this movie, I know it came out in 2011, which doesn't seem like that long ago, but it was, which is weird to think about. But I kept seeing every actor on screen. I was like, oh, I know this person. We had Kristen Bell, Anna Paquin, Adam Brody, like, you know, Alison Brie, like all of these actors. But it's just like, it felt like every actor who was really doing stuff at that time was in this. And, you know, you only get that at a certain time. Like, when are you going to get Anna Paquin and Kristen Bell and Adam Brody in a movie together again? You know, and Rory Culkin, like if you, you know, Kieran Culkin and Macaulay Culkin, that's their little brother. And it's just, I wasn't expecting to see him in this. He typically does more like independent films. I think this is probably the most mainstream thing he's done. And he obviously had a big role, like, let me know in the comments if he's done other things, but I haven't seen him in a ton of stuff. And, you know, he's our killer. He's Charlie. You know, he's Ghostface running around with Jill and the two of them together seemed like an odd pairing. And to hear him, you know, just be so angry at Kirby that she was like, well, now you finally put the moves on me. And they're just going around killing their friends and... Definitely a lot of scenes referencing the first one, which was great. You know, we had Charlie being tied up outside. We have the balcony scenes. We have the garage scene, which was just iconic. And, you know, even the ending when they're in the kitchen and coming out of the closet and, you know, talking with each other and the blood and the knives and like all of that just felt very reminiscent. And I think it had been long enough where they could get away with that. I think if they had tried to do it in the second movie, it would have been too soon. But because it's the fourth movie and 10 years later, I think they can play a little bit with that more. And uh, yeah, again, I just love Wes Craven's, you know, commentary on horror movies and his interpretation and how he puts his love of films back into his own films. And even the concept of having Ghostface filming, like that was the new twist was oh, this time we're going to film it. And it was a little concerning when Charlie and Robbie were talking about it. And I was like, okay, but that also, again, you're constantly guessing. It's like, that seems too obvious that they would admit that if they're actually doing it. But they had GoPros in their ghost face masks and they were going to edit together this film and blame Trevor. And like, that was their reasoning behind it is they wanted to create this film. And obviously Jill wanted fame and success being a final girl. And that was her claim to fame and that backfired very much. But the fact that they were, even when they're on the phone, they're trying to direct people and to have them take on a director role in a horror movie that's obviously being directed, you know, like it's just, again, very meta and such an interesting take. And I love that they had the phone calls back and, you know, do you like scary movies and what are you watching? And I'm over here and... I do feel like the only twist they could have added was have Ghostface lie because his character never lies. He's not always 100% accurate. Like he says, you know, I'm in this closet and not that closet, but he's usually very honest. And, you know, when he said he's not Trevor, I was like, okay, we have to believe that it's not Trevor. And also it would have seemed too obvious to have the boyfriend in it. Again, we've kind of seen that trope before. So, and them talking about how in the, you know, the next movies, the sequels, they have to up the kills. And I feel like we definitely saw that. Like I knew this was going to be a slasher, obviously that's the whole premise, but to see, you know, the girl with her guts literally hanging out and just repeated stabs. And I mean, they definitely took it up and then shooting Trevor in the dick and just like they went for it. So I'm a little worried for what Scream 5 is and what that looks like. And I feel like that came out in like 2020. Too. Like, I feel like that was recently, but yeah, I'm curious to see where this continues and how many, if they'll make seven, like Stab Seven, and if they'll sprinkle in more scenes from Stab film in Scream. And I wasn't really surprised that Gail lived, and I wish we would have learned a little bit more about her life. We saw her on a couple of her book tours, and you know, her assistant Rebecca, which she did not like, but we don't really know what she's been up to for the past 10 years other than working on this book. But we have to believe other things are going on. She didn't mention, you know, a partner or anything like that. We don't know where she's been living. She's obviously left Woodsboro and any family she had she doesn't seem like she keeps in contact with like it doesn't seem like she comes back here very often and almost having her as a suspect at the beginning as well because someone put stuff in her trunk which was obviously Jill and the fact that she could be you know behind this the whole time 
it's interesting, you know, as you watch it, how the clues kind of fall into place. And, you know, if you watch it again, obviously you will see that Charlie and Jill are probably not in the room at the same time very often, other than I think the cinema club meeting. But other than that, their social circles don't really seem to cross. Like they don't seem like they hang out very often. Robbie reminded me of Randy, Jamie Kennedy's character, and he even mentions him. He's like, oh, Randy gets the girl. And to see Randy's character kind of come back to life in this, I thought was great. Randy was always the super film buff, which I feel like was a culmination of Charlie and Robbie in this one with, you know, Robbie constantly live streaming and being, you know, in AV and having the cinema club at school was super cool. I loved all the film posters. I definitely feel like some Wes Craven film posters were in there as well, but it was nice to see that character because when he was killed off, it was such a tough scene. Randy was one of my favorite characters in this franchise because he was such a film buff and just knew everything about any movie and would just talk about movies for hours and his character was probably just written in so that Wes Craven would have an excuse to talk about his favorite movies to viewers and to audience members so when we see Kirby list off this laundry list of horror remakes I was like okay yep there is there has been quite a few you know she's like the hills have eyes and uh, going on and on like Texas Chainsaw Massacre and going on about all of these horror movies you're just like I feel like they were playing tongue-in-cheek a little bit as well but look at how other many horror remakes there is and like look at how many you know have spanned across the horror universe. Overall, I enjoyed it. It's definitely not my favorite Scream sequel, but not the worst that I've seen. I liked where they went with it and how we still have this connection to Sydney and them filming it and trying to play director. And I think the throwbacks to the original one saved it. I don't think if we had those, it would be the same. We needed that piece. We needed something to tie it together. And, you know, even when they say like the first rule, you know, is don't mess with the original. And that is definitely true. And, you know, the staff movies being incorporated as well this time around six and seven you know just so great and the time jump I think played to their favor because they got to you know new technology everybody has cell phones now and you know the sliding phone when we had in um, stab six as well and kind of playing back to the original I thought yeah it was a smart move and I enjoyed it I still think Scream 3 is my favorite out of all of them for the sequels the original also so great you can't touch that and I was great to see the same cast back to see Wes Craven was still involved so let me know if you think I should watch Scream 5 and continue this series but thank you so much for sharing in this first time watching with me if you have any other suggestions for movies you think I should watch please comment below and as always please like comment and subscribe to this channel and check back often for more awesome content. Do you like scary movies? A movie within a movie within a movie. My god, who isn't in this movie? Oh my god, so gruesome, so many stabs. Just a massacre. Oh my god, our insides are on our outside. That's a lot. Oh my god, that's a gusher. Oh, good god, the stupid jump scares get me every time.